a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. International Olympic Committee the International Olympic Committee is an international, non-governmental, non-profit organization based in Lausanne, Switzerland, which is the authority responsible for the Olympic Games. History The IOC was created by Pierre de Coubertard, on 23 June 1894 with Dimitrios Vakalis as its first president. As of June 2017, its membership consists of 95 active members, 41 honorary members, an honorary president and one honor member. The IOC is the supreme authority of the worldwide modern Olympic movement. The IOC organizes the modern Olympic Games and Youth Olympic Games, held in summer and winter, every four years. The first Summer Olympics organized by the IOC was held in Athens, Greece, in 1896. The first Winter Olympics was in Chamonix, France, in 1924. Until 1992, both Summer and Winter Olympics were held in the same year. After that year, however, the IOC shifted the Winter Olympics to the even years between Summer Games, to help space the planning of the two events from one another, and improve the financial balance of the IOC, which receives greater income on Olympic years. The first Summer Youth Olympics were in Singapore in 2010 and the first Winter Youth Olympics were held in Innsbruck in 2012. In 2009, the UN General Assembly granted the IOC permanent observer status. This decision enables the IOC to be directly involved in the UN agenda and to attend UN General Assembly meetings where it can take the floor. This has provided the possibility to promote sport at a new level. In addition, in 1993, the UN General Assembly approved a resolution that further solidified IOC UN cooperation with the decision to revive the Olympic truce by adopting a resolution entitled Building a Peaceful and Better World Through Sport in the Olympic Ideal, which calls upon member states to observe the Olympic truce before every iteration of the Games, and to cooperate with the IOC and the International Paralympic Committee in their efforts to use sport as a tool to promote peace, dialogue, and reconciliation in areas of conflict during and beyond the period of the Olympic and Paralympic Games. During each proclamation at the Olympics, Announcers speak in different languages, French is always spoken first followed by an English translation, and the dominant language of the host nation. IOC Session The IOC Session is the general meeting of the members of the IOC, held once a year in which each member has one vote. It is the IOC's supreme organ, and its decisions are final. Extraordinary sessions may be convened by the President or upon the written request of, at least one third of the members. Among others, the powers of the session are IOC members For most of its existence, the IOC was controlled by members who were selected by other members. Countries that had hosting the Games were allowed two members. When named, they did not become the representatives of their respective countries to the IOC, but rather the opposite, IOC members in their respective countries. Olympic Marketing during the first half of the 20th century the IOC ran on a small budget. As president of the IOC from 1952 to 1972, Avery Brundage rejected all attempts to link the Olympics with commercial interest. Brundage believed the lobby of corporate interests would unduly impact the IOC's decision-making. Brundage's resistance to this revenue stream meant the IOC left organizing committees to negotiate their own sponsorship contracts and use the Olympics symbols. When Brundage retired the IOC had two million US dollars in assets. Eight years later the IOC coffers had swelled to 45 million US dollars. This was primarily due to a shift in ideology toward expansion of the games through corporate sponsorship and the sale of television rights. When Juan Antonio Samranch was elected IOC president in 1980 his desire was to make the IOC financially independent. Samranch appointed Canadian IOC member Richard Pound to lead the initiative as chairman of the New Sources of Finance Commission. In 1982 the IOC drafted ISL Marketing a Swiss sports marketing company to develop a global marketing program for the Olympic movement. ISL successfully developed the program, but was replaced by Meridian Management, a company partly owned by the IOC in the early 1990s. In 1989, one of the staff members at ISL Marketing, Michael Payne, moved to the IOC and became the organization's first marketing director. 
however ISL, and subsequently Meridian, continued in the established role as the AX sales and marketing agents until 2002. In 2002 the IOC terminated the relationship with Meridian and took its marketing program in-house under the direction of Timo Luma, the AX managing director of IOC Television and Marketing Services. During his 17 years with the IOC, in collaboration with ISL Marketing, and subsequently Meridian Management, Payne made major contributions to the creation of a multi-billion dollar sponsorship marketing program, for the organization which, along with improvements in TV marketing and improved financial management, helped, to restore the IX financial viability. Revenue The Olympic movement generates revenue through five major programs. The International Olympic Committee manages broadcast partnerships and the Olympic Partner Worldwide Sponsorship Program. The organizing committees for the Olympic Games manage domestic sponsorship, ticketing, and licensing programs within the host country under the direction of the IOC. The Olympic movement generated a total of more than 4 billion US dollars, 2.5 billion euros in revenue during the Olympic Quadrennium from 2001 to 2004. Revenue Distribution the IOC distributes some of Olympic marketing revenue to organizations throughout the Olympic movement to support the staging of the Olympic Games, and to promote the worldwide development of sport. The IOC retains approximately 10% of Olympic marketing revenue for the operational and administrative costs of governing the Olympic movement. National Olympic Committees NOx. The NOx receive financial support for the training and development of Olympic teams, Olympic athletes and Olympic hopefuls. The IOC distributes top program revenue to each of the NOx throughout the world. The IOC also contributes Olympic broadcast revenue to Olympic Solidarity, an IOC organization that provides financial support to NOx with the greatest need. The continued success of the top program and Olympic broadcast agreements has enabled the IOC to provide increased support for the NOx with each Olympic quadrennium. The IOC provided approximately 318.5 million US dollars to NOx for the 2001-2004 quadrennium. International Olympic Sports Federations IFS. The IOC is now the largest single revenue source for the majority of IFS, with its contributions of Olympic broadcast revenue that assist the IFS in the development of their respective sports worldwide. The IOC provides financial support from Olympic broadcast revenue to the 28 IFS of Olympic summer sports, and the 7 IFS of Olympic winter sports after the completion of the Olympic Games and the Olympic Winter Games, respectively. The continually increasing value of Olympic broadcast partnership has enabled the IOC to deliver substantially increased financial support to the IFS with each successive Games. The 7 winter sports IFS shared 85.8 million US dollars. 75 million euros in Salt Lake 2002 broadcast revenue. The contribution to the 28 summer sports IFS from Athens 2004 broadcast revenue has not yet been determined, but the contribution is expected to mark a significant increase over the 190 million US dollars, 150 million euros that the IOC provided to the summer IFS following Sydney 2000. Other organizations the IOC contributes Olympic marketing revenue to the programs of various recognized international sports organizations, including the International Paralympic Committee and the World Anti-Doping Agency. Environmental Concerns The International Olympic Committee recognizes that the Olympic Games demand tremendous environmental resources, activities, and construction projects that could be detrimental to a host city's environment. In 1995, IOC President Juan Antonio Samranch stated, The International Olympic Committee is resolved to ensure that the environment becomes the third dimension of the organization of the Olympic Games, the first and second being sport and culture. Acting on this statement, in 1996 the IOC added the environment as a third pillar to its vision for Olympic Games. The IOC requires cities bidding to host the Olympics to provide a comprehensive strategy to protect the environment in preparation for hosting, and following the conclusion of the Games. This initiative was most notably acted upon in 2000, when the Green Olympics effort was developed by the Beijing Organizing Committee for the Beijing Olympic Games. 
the Beijing 2008 Summer Olympics effort to host environmentally friendly games resulted in over 160 projects meeting the goal of green games through improved air quality and water quality, implementation of sustainable energy sources, improved waste management, and environmental education. These projects included industrial plant relocation or closure, furnace replacement, introduction of new emission standards, and more strict traffic control. Most of these measures were adopted on a temporary basis, and although real improvements were realized, most of these improvements had disappeared one year following the Games. Although these improvements were short-lived, IOC's inclusion of environmental policies in evaluating and selecting host cities demonstrates a corporate responsibility that may be built upon in years to come. Detailed frameworks for environmental sustainability have been released for the 2018 Winter Olympics and 2020 Summer Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea, and Tokyo, Japan, respectively. International Olympic Committee Approaches The IOC has four major approaches to addressing environmental health concerns during the construction and competitions of the Olympic Games. First. The IOC Sustainability and Legacy Commission focuses on how the IOC can improve the strategies and policies associated with environmental health throughout the process of cities hosting the Olympic Games. Secondly, every candidate city must provide information to the IOC on environmental health issues like air quality and environmental impact assessments. Thirdly, every host city is given the option to declare pledges to address specific or general environmental health concerns of hosting the Olympic game. Fourthly, the IOC has every host city collaborate with the United Nations to work towards addressing environmental health objectives. Ultimately, the IOC uses these four major approaches in an attempt to minimize the negative environmental health concerns of a host city. Venue Construction Effects on Air Cities hosting the Olympic Games have two primary concerns, traffic congestion and air pollution, both of which can result in compromised air quality during and after Olympic venue construction. Research at the Beijing Olympic Games identify particulate matter measured in terms of PM10 as a top priority that should be taken into consideration. The particulate matter in the air, along with other airborne pollutants, cause both serious health problems, such as asthma, and contribute to the deterioration of urban ecosystems. Black carbon is released into the air from incomplete combustion of carbonaceous fluids contributing to global climate change and human health effects. The black carbon concentrations are highly impacted by the truck traffic due to the traffic congestion during the massive construction. Additionally, secondary pollutants like CO, NOx, SO2, benzene, toluene, ethyl benzene, and xylenes are also released during the venue construction, resulting in harmful effects to the environment. Methods to measure particulates in the air Environmental magnetic methods have been established as a successful way of measuring the degree of pollution in air, water and soil. Environmental magnetism is sensitive to particle size, and has proven effective even at low detection levels. For these reasons, it is becoming more widely used. Measures undertaken to improve the air quality Various air quality measures are undertaken before and after the Olympics Games. Research studies demonstrate that the primary method to reduce concentrations of air pollutants is traffic control, including barring heavy vehicles from the roads. For the Beijing Olympics, vehicles not meeting the Euro 1 emission standards were also banned from the roads. And the odd even rule was implemented in the Beijing administrative area. Additional air quality improvement measures include replacing coal with natural gas, suspending construction and or imposing strict dust control on construction sites, closing or relocating the polluting industrial plants, building long subway lines, using cleaner fluid in power plants, and reducing the activity by some of the pollutant factories. These were several air quality improvement measures implemented by the Beijing government. There. Levels of primary and secondary pollutants were reduced, and good air quality was recorded during the Beijing Olympics on most of the days. Venue construction effects on soil Soil contamination can occur during the process of constructing the Olympic venues. In the case of the 2006 Winter Olympic Games in Torino, Italy, negative environmental impacts were observed, 
including impacts on soil, before the games. Researchers studied four areas which the games would likely affect, a floodplain, a highway, the motorway connecting the city to Lyons, France, and a landfill. They performed an extensive analysis in the types of chemicals found in the soils in these areas both before and after the games. Their findings revealed an increase in the number of metals in the top soils post-games, and indicated that soil was capable, as part of an ecosystem, of negating, or buffering, the effects of many heavy metals. However, their findings also revealed that this was not the case for all metals, and that mercury, lead, and arsenic may have been transferred into the food chain on a massive scale. One of the promises made to Londoners when they won the right to host the 2012 Olympic Games was that the Olympic Park would be a blueprint for sustainable living. However, residents of the allotments of Manor Road were relocated, due to the building of the Olympic Stadium, and would later disagree that the Olympics had had any positive effect on their lives. Allotments, originally, were intended to provide low-income residents with a plot of land on which to grow their own food thus receiving the dual health benefits of a supply of fresh food and outdoor work. Many of these sites were lost as a result of the Olympic venue construction, most notably the Manor Road site. Residents were promised that the allotments would be returned, and they eventually were. However, the soil quality would never be the same. Crops tended by allotment residents were the result of years of careful cultivation, and thus, those years of care and attention were destroyed by a bulldozer. Further, Allotment residents were exposed to radioactive waste for five months prior to moving, during the excavation of the site, for the games. Other local residents, construction workers, and on-site archaeologists faced similar exposures and risks. In contrast, the Sydney Olympic Games of 2000 provided an opportunity to improve a highly contaminated area known as the Homebush Bay site. A study commissioned by the New South Wales Government Olympic Coordination Authority, which was responsible for the game's site preparation, looked at soil contamination prior to the games. The work assessed soils that had been previously impacted by waste, and identified areas that could pose a risk to the environment. Soil metal concentrations were found to be high enough to potentially contaminate groundwater. After risk areas were identified, a remediation strategy was developed. Contaminated soil was consolidated into four containment areas within the site, which left the remaining areas available for recreational use. Also, the contained waste materials no longer posed a threat to surrounding aquifers. Sydney's winning Olympic bid provided a catalyst to undertake the greenest single urban remediation ever attempted in Australia. Venue Construction Effects on Water the Olympic Games can affect water quality in the surrounding region in several ways, including water runoff, and the transfer of polluting substances from the air to water sources through rainfall. Harmful particulates come from both natural substances and man-made substances. Contaminants from these two categories lead to elevated amounts of toxins in street dust. Street dust then reaches water sources through runoff facilitating the transfer of toxins to environments and communities that rely on these water sources. For example, one method of measuring the runoff contamination of water sources involves magnetism. Magnetism measurement systems allow specialists to measure the differences in mineral magnetic parameters in samples of water, air, and vegetation. Unlike traditional methods of measuring pollutants, magnetism is relatively inexpensive, and can identify smaller particle sizes. Another method used to assess the amount and effects of water pollutants is to measure the amount of PM2.5 in rainfall. Measuring PM2.5 is a common metric for assessing air quality. Comparing PM2.5 levels between air and rainfall samples allows scientists to determine the amount of air pollution being transferred to water sources. Pollutants in rainfall quickly and directly affect pollution in groundwater sources. In 2013, researchers in Beijing found a significant relationship between the amount of PM2.5 concentrations in the air and in rainfall. Studies showed that rainfall had a significant washing effect on PM2.5 in the air, transferring a large portion of these pollutants from the air to water sources. In this way, Beijing's notorious air pollution has a direct and significant impact on rainfall, and therefore, on water resources throughout the region. 
Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?